Yeah, I'll never catch Mike Mockignan bungee jumping, skydiving or dangling over a ravine. He's not hanging with the Sherpas on Mount Everest or volcano boarding. Yes, that's a thing, either. The Jets' general manager's sense of adventure likely includes analyzing pad levels on the All-22 on a Friday night. He's not exactly an adrenaline junkie. The organization's risk-averse head of football operations has taken the safe route for three years, but it's time for a strategically aggressive move in the coming months to land a franchise quarterback. It's time to swim with the Sharks. Mockingman's resume is sprinkled with low-risk, high-reward deals. Some failed. Some were short-term solutions that serve their purpose. In fact, the Jets' GM has never traded away a premium draft pick first three rounds in his tenure. The heftiest draft capital was a 2017 fourth-round pick that he gave Washington to select offensive tackle Brandon Shell in the 2016 fifth round. Mockignan dealt fifth-round picks for Brandon Marshall and Ryan Claddy and got back seventh-rounders from the Bears and Broncos, respectively. He ultimately doled out a sixth-rounder for Ryan Fitzpatrick. He stockpiled draft picks last year by trading back four times and trading out once for an additional 2018 fifth-round pick. Jeff Zelavan's gadget image is safe, 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 safe and safe. The 45 Jets have exceeded expectations on one Jets drive and every other street in America, but Mockignan can no longer ignore the elephant in the room as he finishes his third season on the job. It's time to make a real commitment to a potential franchise signal caller this offseason. We're preparing as we normally do with the college draft process and eventually with pro-free agency, Mockignan said Wednesday. Then we'll sit down and analyze that at the end of the season and figure out where we want to go with that. Maneuvering for a franchise quarterback ISNT for the faint of heart. Consider the price tag for the Rams and Eagles before the 2016 draft. The Rams gave up two first-rounders, two second-rounders and two third-rounders to the Titans to make the gargantuan leap from number 15 to number 1. Los Angeles also got back Tennessee's 2016 fourth and sixth-rounders. The brain trust in La La Land went for it after identifying Jared Goff as a future franchise changer. The Eagles were a bit more creative to land NFL MVP frontrunner Carson Wentz. Philly initially moved from number 13 to number 8 by trading starting cornerback Byron Maxwell and linebacker Kiko Alonso to Miami. Then, general manager Howie Roseman gave the Browns two first-rounders 2016 and 2017, a second-rounder 2018, third-rounder 2016 and fourth-rounder 2016 to move from number 8 to number 2. Tim Fullerusa today sports something tells me the Rams and Eagles are happy with their investments. Goff and Wentz, after all, are the point men for the NFL's two highest-scoring offenses through nine weeks. The Jets would pick 14th in the first round if the draft were today, so Mockignan likely will have to get out of his comfort zone to strike gold. The downside the move could backfire like it did for Washington when they went all-in for Robert Griffin III in 2012. Washington, however, suffered only two miserable seasons 2013 and 2014 before returning to the playoffs. Although Mockignan said Wednesday that he doesn't want to sit here and speculate about whether the long-term answer at quarterback currently is on the roster, it's become abundantly clear that the organization's decision-makers simply don't believe that Bryce Petty or Christian Hackenberg will solve their most maddening problem. The team's thinking Mockignan took a couple low-risk stabs at young signal callers with fourth and second round investments, so the fallout is relatively minimal. Jets Brass explored trading up for Jameis Winston, Marcus Mariota and Goff while dangling Muhammad Wilkerson as part of a package in the previous two drafts, but it was cost-prohibitive in their estimation. Mockagnan WASNT ready to mortgage the future at that time for a quarterback given the lack of a solid young foundation. The thinking was simple we're so far off from competing that it makes more sense to improve other deficient areas rather than go all in for a signal caller. Besides, were the Buccaneers and Titans ever really going to trade away their shot at franchise quarterbacks in 2015? David J. Phillip at the Daily News reported last week that there were people in the Jets organization who wanted to trade back into the first round of last year's draft for Clemson QB Deshaun Watson. Some were willing to trade Wilkerson, too. 
The Jets, however, ultimately never made an offer for a guy who was leading the NFL in two-count passes before suffering a season-ending knee injury in practice last week. I feel very good about the players and decisions we made, Mockagnan said Wednesday. Deshaun was doing a very good job for Houston, but again, from our standpoint, you don't go back and play the what-if game. The landscape, however, has changed now for the Jets, who appear further along in their rebuild than many expected. Todd Bowles remade his coaching staff to help a team that could be .500 entering their Week 11 by a formidable young core is taking shape. The team culture is changing. Makagnan doesn't have a lifetime appointment to find his franchise quarterback, either. It's time to make an aggressive, but not reckless, play to get his man. There are enough people in the NFL scouting community who believe this will be a quarterback quick draft. There is real opportunity for a team like the Jets to land a difference maker at QB. Makagnan must part with premium draft picks, though. Lots of them, but it's a risk worth taking.